Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast a part of your professional development. Today, we're going to offer you a very special opportunity here to help yourself get organized. You know, we have a lot of teachers that find us here at TeacherCast and say, look, I need a little bit of help with this whole digital thing. I have files everywhere. My inbox is 75 million different things. What do I do? How do I do it? Well, if that describes you and where you are, we want to help you out, especially now that it's the beginning of the school year. We want to help you not only get organized, but stay organized. So today we're going to present one of our favorite presentations called Stop, Drop, and Get Organized. Several ways that you can not only help yourself, but learn the skills to teach your students to help them become better organized themselves. So stick with us. There's a lot of great things right here on the TeacherCast Educational Network. And welcome back to TeacherCast today. We are going to be taking this whole concept of digital organizing to the next level. Now, there's one spot that I want you guys to visit while watching this presentation. Maybe you can open up another tab, give you a couple seconds, so that little command T right there, open up a brand new tab. Good. Thanks so much. I want you guys to go to this website below, teachercast.net forward slash get organized today. Teachercast.net slash get organized today. And I want you guys to enroll yourself in this program. By doing so, we're going to send you some freebies. We're going to send you some goodies. We're going to help you keep track of yourself during the school year and make sure that those inboxes stay low and that Google Drive stays functional for you. Now, when you click on that link, it's going to ask you to sign in with your name, tell us a little bit about you, and that's going to take you to our Stop, Drop, and Get Organized homepage here, where you're going to learn a little bit about digital organization and why it's important. You're going to have an opportunity to follow along with us on this very slide deck that we have, and of course, you're going to be able to be a part of the TeacherCast educational network, which means you're going to have the opportunity to receive amazing free templates, blog posts, podcasts, things that are going to help you out throughout the year. So welcome to our show. We are glad to have you here. Now, the first question that we want to ask you before we get into our lesson today is, are you ready? Now, I ask that question because a lot of times people say, I need to get organized, right? Everybody here needs to get organized, but do you want to? This is something that we're going to talk about a couple times during our session today. Organization is something that you want to keep up with time and time again. Five minutes a day, 10, 15 minutes a week is all that it takes to keep yourself organized. So let's kind of go through where we are today and learn a little bit about some of the things that we have going for us. Here we have our agenda. We're going to talk a little bit about Google Drive. We're going to talk about Gmail. We're going to talk about Google Advanced Search. We're going to introduce you to ways to share your digital media and keep it organized. And also, we're going to talk a little bit about YouTube today. Now, we might not go in detail for all of those things. That's why it's important for you to be enrolled in this classroom. We're going to be sending you guys some interesting tips and tidbits about this course and how it works over the next couple days. But let's see where we are. And I have a question for you guys about your Google Drives. Does your Google Drive look like this? If I look at this picture and I ask you to describe what it is, you might say that you see a bed, you see a mirror, you see a table. Does your Google Drive look like this? Is it neat? Is it tidy? Is it something that you'd want to show your, your, your mom? Is it something that you'd want to share your significant other? Or does it look like this picture here on the right? Is your Google Drive messy? Is it cluttered? Does it have stuff all over it? Are you having a hard time finding things? Do you feel that you're a little bit, 
you know, bogged down just a little bit by the way that your Google Drive is. And that's okay if that's the situation. We've all been there. We've all had those opportunities where you go into Google Drive and, oh my goodness, things are just messy. Now, we talk about Google Drive today, but of course, this could equally be your Dropbox. This could be your OneDrive. This could be your any kind of online, even your hard drive on your computer or computers. I know some of you guys out there are running multiple hard drives with lots of different stuff on it. We are here today to talk a little bit about how we can do things. Now, the nice thing is, is that there are four steps, four steps for you guys to keep yourself organized. Let's take a look at what those are today. Number one, we're going to learn about how to clean up your files. We're going to talk about how to organize and share those files. What are, what are the different kinds of files that we have in our drive? We're going to talk about how to spice up our folders or how to do things a little bit different to make them work for you. And then the most important thing we're going to do here is we're going to rinse and we're going to repeat. We're going to go through the whole process here and figure out what we can do for our Google Drives. So step number one, we're going to talk about cleaning things up. We're going to want to remove old and unwanted files. Maybe you've got a ton of folders and files from years ago that don't mean anything right now. Let's learn how to do that. We're going to talk about converting Word docs into Google Docs, renaming untitled files, creating folders, and organizing files and folders so that way you can find them. So here's the first thing that I want you to do. Number one, we're going to be going through this in kind of one of those listen to what we're talking about pause, come back. All right. So this, you might want to bookmark this video. You might want to come back to this. Number one, we want to learn how to remove old and unwanted files. I want you guys to do a search, go into your Google drives right now and do a search for the term untitled document. And look, this is usually where the people in the audience, you know, laugh a little bit because they realize that, oh my goodness, they have hundreds of untitled documents. That's the first thing that your document is named whenever you create it, after all. Untitled document. How many times are you working with a student? Are you working with your teachers? Or you're just working in general, and you open up a Google Doc, you write a bunch of stuff on it, and you never title it. Take the moment. Pause this video. Go through everything and figure out what you want to do, right? If you no longer need that document, if you no longer need that folder, delete it. Get rid of it. Move it out of the way. Maybe create an archive folder. Put it all in there. Do something to help unclutter your stuff. Now, I specifically want you to focus on just the documents that you own, right? And the important documents. There's no need to spend time on documents renaming them that other people own, right? Maybe somebody created something, shared it with you, and they made it untitled. Look, don't waste your time on those. But anything that you have right now, I want you to make sure that you remove all your old and unwanted files. I'll give you a minute. Pause the video right here. All right, now the next thing that I want you to do is I want you to convert and delete. That's the biggest part here, convert and delete. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use Office documents. I love Office documents, right? If you are somebody who's using very, very exclusive Excel formulas and formats and stuff like that, please, by all means, do that, right? Use that. Um, look into something called Awesome Drive. It's an amazing way to use Microsoft Office documents inside of Google drive. But when we're looking at things, so many people bring, let's just say a Word doc into Google Drive, they convert it, and then they use that Google doc to go on with their projects. But they still have that Google doc, the original Google doc sitting there, and now it's old, it's legacy, it's outdated. Take a moment. Do you have documents like that? Can we get rid of them? Because we remember, if it's a Google Doc, it doesn't take up space in your drive. However, if it's a Word Doc, it is taking up space in your drive. Not a lot, not, not a lot, guys, but just a little bit here. So the second step here is to convert and delete your old files. Now, the next thing here is we want to click and change our file names. How many times do we have file names that don't make sense? And we're going to talk a little bit about naming here, but let's go backwards one slide and talk about that. We take a Word doc, we bring it into Google Docs, and now it's called something like mydocument.doc. 
It brings the file extension over. And I see so many Google Docs that have the extension .doc on there. That just means people haven't had the opportunity to change the name of what those documents are, right? You don't need .doc at the end of your Google Docs. Doesn't mean anything. When we're talking about naming here, we're looking at creating a file system that works and works for you. It's about looking at things that have similar names. So in this example here, this was a, a teacher's um, Google Drive folder. And if you look here, every single document starts the same way. It's called the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. This was the unit that this particular teacher was working on. And it's important that we keep everything the same name because now you're not only creating files and folders, you're creating something searchable. And that's an important term here when we're looking at our Google Drives, our OneDrives, our Dropboxes. If we can't search for it, we can't find it. If we can't find it, guess what? It doesn't exist. So take a moment right now. Again, pause this video. Figure out what you want to do with your names, right? Figure out a way to come up with a name. Maybe you're working collaboratively with another teacher. Well, if you call everything Chapter 2 and your teacher friend calls it CH period 2, it doesn't always work, right? You can't find these things. So coming up with a way to name things is certainly important. I always recommend at the end of the naming, you know, and by the way, there is no character limit, right? You can have a million characters, eh, I think, on, on these Google Doc names. So, you know, the Rise and Fall of Rome website, the Rise and Fall of Rome homework assignment, the Rise and Fall of Rome chapter one quiz. Come up with a, a similar naming thing. That way, all you have to do to find this is go up to the search box and it's yours. And this is just a great example here of what we can do. You type in the rise and fall of Rome and boom, there is everything that you need. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to create folders. Now, this is kind of contrary to what we just said, but if you come up with a decent folder structure, one that works and one that's based off of search terms, you're going to be able to figure out exactly what you need when you need it. So click on your folders, select your folders, name your folders, make sure everything is the way you want them to be. It's also important to know that you can move folders around by right clicking them and selecting move to. Now, here's a cool thing. If you just click on the move to button, you're going to see a button in blue that says move. But on a Mac, if you click on the option key or the alt key, and I believe it's the same key on a Windows keyboard, the alt key, you're going to see that blue button go from move to add. And that's right. You can actually add a file to more than one location. It's the same file that you can have in more than one location. Right. You can also have folders be in more than one location. Maybe you have a lesson plan, right? You put your lesson plans in your lesson plan folder, but you also have a folder that your supervisor wants you to have your lesson plans in. You can take that same doc and not move it out of your lesson plans folder, but you can put it in the other folder as well, meaning it's in two different spots. Check that out. How to add stuff. You can always press shift Z and, and add a file or folder to more than one location. Now, number one, we talked about these whole this whole concept of removing folders. We know that there are two different places to share your docs. We have My Drive and we have Shared With Me. Now, what's the difference? My Drive is organized, right? You can put stuff in folders. You can nest things up and down, whereas Shared With Me is just everything that somebody has shared with you chronologically. Okay, so let's kind of bring this one in here. If somebody shares something with me, that automatically goes into the shared with me folder. If it's important to me, then I can move it from the shared with me and put it into my drive where I can organize it. Now, do I have to do that? No, you don't have to move things out of shared with me, but here's why you want to. It's all about the search. See, I told you I was going to go back and forth with that one a couple of times. If you have something that you want to search for, let's say the word baseball, and you do a search for baseball, it's going to find everything in your drive that has baseball. And at the bottom of that, all the way at the bottom, then it's going to show off the stuff that's in the shared with me. But as soon as you take that doc out of shared with me and put it into my drive, now that search result isn't on the bottom of your search. It then moves up towards the top of your search. So by taking things out of the shared with me folder, which again, isn't organizable. I have so many people that say, how do I organize that? 
you can't. You don't. Don't worry about it, right? You can delete things, but don't worry about it, right? So keep everything that is important to you in my drive. Keep it organized. It will be good for you. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to figure out how to spice up our folders. There's several ways. Number one, you can right-click on any folder and color code it. Right? That's an important thing. You can click on it and say change color and they give you a couple dozen colors or so. I use this a lot. Right? So I might say all of my chapter one documents, everything in chapter one is are, are in green folders. I might say all my chapter two docs are in red folders, right? So there's a lot of different things that we can do here when it comes to changing colors. We can also star our folders. We can also unstar our folders. I'm going to stop right there and kind of say, you know, go through. Before you start this process, click on the side here where it says starred and unstar everything. Because maybe you've been starring things for the last couple of years and you don't remember what is starred. Well, the concept is simple, guys. If everything is starred, then nothing is really starred. So at the beginning of the school year, I always unstar everything, maybe minus one or two things that are important. And then I start fresh. Okay. So color cut everything and star everything. And that brings us to our last point here, which is rinse and repeat. If you take a look at your Google Drive for five minutes a day, you know that there's that time at the end of the day where kids are leaving and you can't quite rush out to your car. Spend five minutes. Or on a Friday, spend a few extra minutes just to get yourself organized for Monday. You will absolutely be glad that you did. So those are the four things that we want to keep in mind when we're looking at our Google Drive here. We want to organize our files. We want to clean them up. We want to make sure that they're spiced up with different colors and stars. And then we want to rinse and repeat. Now, again, this is a great time to pause the video. We're about 15, 16 minutes into this or so. How are you guys doing? We want to know. Leave a comment down there. You can always reach out to us on TeacherCast by emailing us over at feedback at teachercast.net. We want to know what you're doing out there, and we want to get your thoughts and feedbacks on how you can be a better digital organizer. So again, pause this video, and we're going to come back in just a couple seconds, and we're going to talk all about Gmail. All right, and welcome to our section here on Gmail. Gmail is one of those things that, you know, again, just like our Google Drive, we need to look into it. We're going to talk all about choosing the inbox that's right for you, customizing your sidebar navigation, making use of labels, advanced search, creative, and my favorite topic here, archive versus delete. So if we're looking at this, the average teacher's inbox probably looks something well, it doesn't look like this at all, right? I'm sure if you look at your inbox, you've got thousands of things that are cluttering up your inbox. It's important to be able to take a look at your inbox settings and figure out what you want. Do you want to have a default inbox? Do you want to have all the unread messages up on top? How do you want to live your, your Gmail life? Because after all, we kind of live in our email and around our email, and it's important to make sure that our emails and stuff are set up right. It's also important that we understand that we are dealing with with labels, not folders, not folders. They're not called folders. Don't call them folders. They're labels. What does that mean? That means in a folder structure, an email is in a folder. That's in a folder. That maybe is in a folder. Labels don't work that way. You can have an email that has multiple labels. It's the difference between saying, I'm in a room and that room is in the house and that house is in the township and that township is in the state or saying, okay, I'm sitting at my desk, which is also in a house, also in a state, in the planet, on the hemisphere, right? Different things like that, making sure that we can have those labels and also making sure that those labels on the left side are seen. I play a game here that says hide everything on the left side until you need it. So you notice that there's a bunch of options here for labels and you see where it says drafts, right? Show, meaning always see it. Hide, meaning never see it, or show if unread, meaning if something pops up there, then I want to see it. Now, I have hundreds of labels, hundreds of labels for different things. I have all of those clicked to show if unread. My whole entire goal is to gamify this whole email concept here and to make the left side as small as possible here. Making sure that we create the right labels for us, things that we're going to need in order to keep our emails safe. It's also important that we understand how advanced search works, right? You can say from TeacherCast, or I want to say any email that's going to 
teacher cast or has the words teacher cast in it knowing a little bit about advanced search and knowing how that works with the filtering right so in here i'm filtering every email from at google.com I'm not doing webmaster at google.com because then that's going to give you multiple filters. But I might do something here where I say any email that comes in from at google.com. It could be info at webmaster at service at customer support at. But I'm going to put a google.com label on any email that comes in. Think about that. There's a lot of different purposes for doing that stuff here and things that might help out. The other thing here is archiving versus deleting. Now, what's the difference? Why do we have this issue? Well, number one, we have an issue with archiving versus deleting, and it's not your fault. I, I, it's not your fault. It's Google's fault. By default, by default, let me see if I can pull back a couple slides here. By default, there it is. If you see here, it says sent mail, drafts, and all mail. By default, and I hate this, all mail is set as a hidden option. And if you don't know that it's a hidden option, then you don't realize that all mail is really the catch for everything that you have. I'm going to cover a couple slides here. So let's just kind of take a look here. All mail is everything that you have. Inbox happens to be a label. Let that one sink in. Everything that you have can only be in two places. Okay, Here, here's the way that this works. Okay, your email can only be in two places. It can be in all mail or it can be in the trash. All mail or the trash, right? So when you have an email that comes in, it goes into your inbox. Where's your inbox? Hmm. Your inbox is actually in all mail, right? Inbox is a label. I can take it out of the inbox. Is it still in all mail? Yes, it absolutely is still in all mail. If I put a label on it, is it still in all mail? Yes. What if I put three labels on it? What if I put three labels and one of them is still inbox? It's still in all mail. So the, the, the thing that people say to me all the time is, I don't want to get rid of the things in my inbox. How do I know where they are? And the answer is simple. They're still in all mail. Now, if I hit archive, that simply means delete things from the inbox. Delete things from the inbox, okay? Let me go backwards for a second here, because I, I, I see, I got myself into saying that, and I shouldn't. Archive means remove things from the inbox. I want to make sure that I'm doing this, and I'm, I'm purposely going to keep this one in the video, because I think even as tech trainers, we use these words, and we want to make sure that we're using the words right. So archive means remove it from the inbox, it doesn't mean delete. Delete usually means put in trash. Now, trash is over here, right? All mail, trash. We want to make sure that we get everything here correct. So if we look at our example here, on the top left, we have a desk. I want you to think of your inbox as your desk. Something comes up, you put it in your inbox, right? You sit down at your desk, you put your phone on the desk, you put your magazine on the desk. Now, on top of that, we have our filing cabinets. Our filing cabinets are the labels. Well, where do we want to put this? I'm going to put the phone in the second drawer. I'm going to put a label on it, but it's also in the room, but it's also, again, you get the label thing, right? We don't want to have an inbox like the bottom left-hand picture here. We don't want it to get cluttered. So we want to be able to archive things by putting those labels in. You can use this philosophy and literally feel good about yourself and knock out 80,000 emails in your inbox and you still have them you still have access to them. If you have 80,000 emails in your inbox, you are not efficient. So let's figure out how to do all that stuff, right? Trash means exactly what that is, right? It's, it's in the trash can. Does that mean your email's gone? No. That means that you have 30 days. It's a 30-day recycling bin to put that stuff away. So it's really, really important as we go through here to look at this and say, how do I want to live my life? Do I want it to be cluttered by emails or do I want to take control of it and put those things on here? Now, the next topic that we want to hit is search. Now, I should be saying at this point, pause the video and go do your Gmail searching, but look, it's not the most sexy thing, right? So let's just take a look here under our search terms because we're going to take, you know, we're going to zoom by this one here. But really, we're going to look at different things that we can do with Zoom. Number one, we're going to look at different search topics. Now, this isn't something that we really want to lecture on, but 
use these resources here, right? Google search is based off of your voice. Let's all say that together, right? Google search is made for your voice. You don't, you don't talk like pizza, pepperoni, local delivery. You say, I'd like to order a pizza. Google search is powerful enough to be able to differentiate all of those things to get you exactly what you need. So I have some Google search tips and tricks here that, again, if you sign up for this class here, if you've enrolled over on teachercast.net slash get organized today, you guys are going to have access to all of these different videos and tips and tricks. Here are some different Google search tips and functions and ex executions, how it works out. We're going to have an opportunity to look through all of these things. And I also am going to give you guys some links to Google search references. References. Google search reference guides, these are things that you might want to print out, put on your wall, share it with your teachers, put it out on a Friday folder message, anything that you need there, and certainly be able to become a master of Google search. Now, let's kind of go through here because I, I see that we're kind of, you know, getting to that time crunch on this. But if we're looking at the next big segment here, we're going to look at digitalizing our organizing our media. Photos in Google Drive. Google Photos is wonderful, all right? When we're looking at Google Photos, we're really looking at a free, f for now, f free for now, I, I don't know about that one, but free for now, free place to put all of your digital videos and all of your digital photos, right? And there's two options when you're uploading those things. You can do high quality, which you got unlimited, or you can use native, true, raw footage, which if you're a professional photographer, cool. But then that takes away Google Drive storage. If not, you can certainly do this, you know, uncompressed, or I should say compressed and, and for free. So I always suggest organize your photos and videos in Google Photos and organize all your drive stuff over in in um, in Google Drive, right? So a lot of stuff there that we can use here, but we also want to do that. We also want to make sure that we are using YouTube to our advantage. When I ask you guys, what is YouTube? The answer is always, it's the best curation tool, right? It is a great place to store your videos. It's really simple to get onto to YouTube to create an account. All right, you just go go into your YouTube settings, create an account. You can put your name down on there. You can create a channel. You can do all these great things and have everything set up pretty easily to make sure that your YouTube channel is updated. Now, guys, we gave you a ton of stuff, right? And we kind of glanced over some of it. We took some time with other things. But I wanted to bring this stuff to your attention today because digital organization is so important. And there's only one way to be digitally organized, and that's just to get digitally organized. So here's the question for you. What is next? What are you going to do with the next 10 minutes? Are you going to turn off this video and walk away? Or are you going to say, all right, I got to rewind. I'm going to check out my Google Drive. Maybe I'm going to find all those untitled documents. Maybe I'm going to go into my Gmail and take a look at some of the things that we're doing here. Guys, I'm here to help you guys out. You can always find us on Twitter at TeacherCast. You can always leave me a voice message over at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. Let us know what you're doing. Let us know how we can support you. And don't forget to head on over to TeacherCast.net slash get organized now. We want to help you out with everything. We want to make sure that you guys are staying digitally organized this year. So there's nothing that you have in front of you that's more important than this what are you guys waiting for stop drop get yourself organized today we're here to help you out and on behalf of everybody here in the teacher cast educational network my name is jeff bradbury reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students <laughs>